So what I'm going to talk through is using the static device on a number of different types of endoscopes. These are the kind of classic systems that we'd use in the ENT outpatient for nasal endoscopy. This is a Pentax system, chip tip. Um, this one's slightly different, it has, has a slightly broader tip to it. So uh, you can see that uh, on the very distal part of it where the CCD sits, uh, it's slightly bulbous at the tip. So there's a different technique for passing this scope through, which we'll show you. Um, this is the Stortz Telepack system, again, a digital system. Um, a bit more of a, a straighter tip here that you can see, so it, not as bulbous, but a bit rigid uh, at the end, but certainly protected the Stortz um, camera at the end there. And then here from GP Medical, we have the uh, Zion system. Uh, the nice thing about this one is the, the different action. Um, uh, this one tends to be favoured by a lot of speech and language therapists. Um, the uh, tip of this one, again, is uh, pretty straight. There's a slight um, bulge to the tip that we have to be wary about when we're using the snap device and a slight different way of gripping the system. So uh, what we'll demonstrate now is just how you, first of all, fit the snap device. So um, here on the mannequin, if you look close up, what we've got here is the nostril and we, we just place the um, inside of the snap just close to that nostril. You can see that the um, outer part of the snap device just sits underneath this uh, white band here and it's just positioned comfortably on one side with a gentle grip of the aluminium band here just to secure things in place. So let's just show you now on uh, one of these systems. Let's start with this uh, stort system here of how it would scope. So uh, the key thing, first of all, is to make sure there's plenty of lubrication at the tip of the scope and make sure there's plenty of lubrication um, on the any parts that, that might project out. And then this just allows for easy insertion and removal. Uh, make sure your light source is on, your orientation is correct. And for a, a scope like this, actually passing the scope, there's no real change in your manoeuvre at all. So first of all is the threading technique and this is just simply concentrating on passing the scope through the snap device. So you can see here, I'm not actually looking at this screen at all here behind me. So once I've threaded through and, and the, the uh, snap is in, you can see that we've got the inside of the nostril there. I do this uh, adjusting mechanism, which is lifting. And this is just using the index finger here, just to lift up a little bit here. And then this is the nice thing about snap, is that it guides the scope in the direction of the nose. And so once we lift, we're really, um, recognizing the normal nasal anatomy here with the terminus passing through the post-nasal space, the eustachian tube and down to have a look inside the larynx. Uh, again, the, the beauty of using a snap device is that you can scope with one hand. So if you're doing evaluations of swallow, you can actually give the patient something to swallow. And uh, it's quite nice maneuverability just with one hand. Uh, removing this, it's just making sure that your scope is straight. And that, what I mean by that is that the tip is straight, not bent. This means that it's not hooked when it's coming out of the patient's nose. And you'll note the way that I've always got an index finger here just controlling, withdrawing out this nice straight scope, nice and gentle, but making sure here that the scope is straight, not hooked as it comes out for obvious reasons. So uh, this Stortz uh, scope is a um, uh, nice scope to use. It's, it's got a very um, uh, thin channel, but also is quite uniform uh, across it. So let's move to something slightly different now, which is the uh, Zion system. Now the Zion system, as I said, a very thin scope, very light to use, pistol grip so you can use it in however um, way you want to. Um, again, because this is quite narrow actually, this will work in a similar kind of mechanism uh, before as the, as the stall scope. So um, first of all, what we do is just concentrate on threading it through. You'll feel a give as the scope threads through. And then again, it's just the lifting mechanism to pass the scope into the front of the nose and then once you're through the nose it's exactly the same um, as you were before on the other system just passing this through nice and gently down into the hyperpharynx and then down into the larynx for a beautiful picture there of the larynx same again taking your images exactly how you want to and the same rule applies when you're withdrawing the scope make sure that this bars in a neutral position so you're not hooking the scope as it comes out nice and gentle control on the base of the snap here and just as you come to the valves what you want to make sure as you're withdrawing from the valves and you'll just see them closing on the camera you see that, that there's that little um, give there from the ridge of that scope but if you've got plenty of lubrication on here and your scope is straight then that won't cause any bother at all so that goes in very nicely indeed 
And finally, uh, probably the type of scripts that offer the biggest challenge, um, the, the ones that have a, uh, a, a bigger camera, so it gives you a, a really nice view. Um, but the problem is that the um, uh, tip of this scope itself, uh, you can see if we focus on the tip of it, um, if I just get it right up close to the camera, it's slightly bulbous. Um, uh, and some of these systems are. So uh, let me just give this one a quick wipe down because I've just uh, got a bit of gel on the tip of it there just to make sure that the camera is clear. And uh, what we're going to do is pass this in a slightly different way. So when you've got a, a, a thicker tip scope like this, um, what you actually want to do is handle this slightly differently. You need some rigidity here when you're passing the scope through nice and straight. So you hold it in one hand like this uh, depending if you're left or right-handed. Uh, I'm actually right-handed, but I like to scope with my left hand. And then what you do with your other side is you fix um, the uh, snap just on the patient's nose and you're just passing this through. So it's the same threading technique. So you thread through and actually what you can do is lift the snap up into position and just keep threading through until you're just at this part of the nose, which is just where normally where we'd start scoping. You can then release back into your neutral position and then again use the lift technique here to pass the scope through and pass it all the way to the back of the nose. This is the advantage of having slightly bigger uh, cameras as you, you, you know the bigger the lens the, the view is much clearer and you can see there we've got a beautiful view of the larynx. Now the key thing when you're using these slightly more bulbous tip scopes is on withdrawal of the scope so the rule applies in terms of keeping the tip straight, so making sure this bar is neutral. Uh, this also works for the Olympus scopes, by the way, they, they are very similar to this. And when you're withdrawing back, you just want to make sure that you've got this good control. So don't just yank the scope out, because it will scrape the end of the endoscope here. But you'll see what I'm doing is always just very gentle, almost like pinching the scope out as it comes out here. And it will just come through these um, valve leaflets. And actually, because there's plenty of lubrication on there, there's no um, give at all, there's no resistance uh, at all here to passing through the valves. I can go in and out without any problem at all. And this is what uh, um, people are concerned about, is whether it catches those four leaflets. But actually, the advantage of it being slightly wider is that it's stretched out the valve a little bit. You can see the valve beginning to close there. So it's a really nice demonstration of the auto-close mechanism of the valve. And as the patient blows, it will seal off even more and out that scope comes. So that's the slight different challenge with using that scope. So all in all, um, doesn't really matter what type of endoscope you use, the Olympus one, uh, the Pentax scope as we have here, um, the Stort scope, or the um, Zion scope by BP Medical. Uh, these are the commoner scopes that we see in outpatients. Doesn't really matter which one you use. Uh, Snap is very compatible with each one.